We've breaking news in the last hour that the former, and former Iranian leader Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has registered at the country's interior ministry to run in the upcoming presidential election. Brent crude futures spiking on this news. We're joined now live by Bloomberg's Yusuf Gamal al-Din from Dubai. Just give us a sense of why oil is up on this. He is a hardliner. Well, it is, yeah. Look, very simple. I'll give you the numbers here. The raw numbers tell a story that Iran is, what, 11.8 percent of OPEC output. It is the third largest OPEC producer. There's a lot of oil that is connected to the Iran story. And look, in the past, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, he, well, he wasn't very interested in running or registering. Now this change of tone, registering for his candidacy, bear in mind there's still a vetting process. So this is far from final in terms of the lineup when the vote gets underway in May. Now, two key scenarios that could play out here. One is that he splits the conservative vote. The other is that he could possibly, uh, of course, be on course for uh, get going all the way through to a possible victory. Uh, this is a test of Hassan Rouhani's policies. Look, this is a president who has become emblematic of a course of normalization when it comes to relations with the West. He's pushed that front onwards and upwards. Trade and investment, he's been working on that. These are all elements that are now at risk. And you're already looking at strained relations when it comes to some of the rhetoric we're hearing from the White House. When you look at questions about Iranian support for the Syrian uh, Syrian government of Bashar al-Assad. So plenty here that is being factored in right now, and the market's still getting its head around this news. Guy? Okay. Hey, the market also seems optimistic, Youssef, Matt, Matt here in Berlin, on OPEC's output cuts being extended. What are you hearing about that? Yeah, so that's, that's the tone, again, that's coming from uh, a lot of the OPEC producers and Saudi Arabia as well. And uh, the numbers just seem to add up, and it makes the most sense to do that extension. You look at where inventories are at in the U.S. and globally, uh, there's an argument to be made that those are starting to come down, according to some. I mean, not in terms of the EIA inventories, but more work needs to be done. And, of course, Russian non-OPEC cooperation is going to be critical for that, uh, whether it works out for another six months or not, whether they need to extend it further, maybe need to get more aggressive as well, because at this rate, it's going to take very long to rebalance.